producing music podcast with Mark Dollar and Cooper Anderson. All right, let's do this. Producing okay. music podcast. Producing episode, music podcast. Episode yes. five. Episode five. This is here. We're here right now. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, Cooper Anderson. Mark Dollar, and we have a very special guest with us today, Cooper Anderson. Why don't you introduce him for us and our audience? So this is Chagrin from YouTube. And Hello. So, uh, yeah, so welcome to the, the show, and, and uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I mean, I checked out your YouTube. I see you do some, yeah. uh, you get some tutorials and, and stuff up there. Yeah, so I do a lot of electronic music, like uh, chill, more down tempo sort of stuff. I've been producing for like five years now, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I just love doing it, honestly. I'm about to uh, go to college. Well, who knows? That's probably getting upturned now because of coronavirus. But in theory, I'm supposed to go to college and do a recording yeah. artist in the fall. Um, yeah, that's uh, yeah, pretty I much heard, it. I heard there's going to be a lot of gap years. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of gap years this year, but... Yeah, it's a good time to do that, mm -hmm. I guess. So I noticed you use yeah, uh, Fruity Loops. Yeah, um, I really like it, honestly. Um, I mean, I don't think it's any better than any other DAWs. I just, it's what I started with, so I just stuck with it, honestly. Nice, nice. Yeah, I love Fruity Loops. I tell you, some of my favorite hip-hop producers, those guys are using Fruity Loops and doing some things that... You know, it would take me in Pro Tools, as you can probably see my wild ass template here, but <laughs> it would take me like years to do in Pro Tools. And they're just doing it so fast, you know? I've yeah. always loved the capabilities in Fruity Loops. What are some of your favorite uh, kind of things to do in Fruity Loops that speeds up your workflow? Uh, I, well, I really love the piano roll, honestly. It's like one of my favorite. Um, elements of it. I mean, because there's pretty much piano roll in any basic DAW, but I like all the little functionality that they put in there. So um, like how you can uh, go through with different MIDI channels in the same uh, pattern. So if I want to, um, it's kind of hard to explain without uh, showing it, but you can uh, change the MIDI channel per, per individual note. And uh, they have a whole bunch of uh, tools in there, like randomization, adjusting for adjusting velocity, adjusting the pattern. Um, key locking, all that sort of stuff. So it's it's more the little things that they have in there that that I, I really enjoy, honestly. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I see um, T Pain on on Twitch. Uh, he he's a big uh, fruit. Well, there's a lot, a lot of people that use Fruity Loops. Yeah, I mean it's definitely definitely legit. So um, oh, yeah, yeah. So how did you get into uh, music production? Like, what led you to where you're at now? Well, when I was like, I was like, I don't know. 13 12 something like that me and my little brother would do uh, a whole bunch of these little like home movies mm -hmm. we uh we would just film them on my ipod and then we'd edit them on my computer and we wanted to put background music in them and i found this guy uh, kevin mcload i don't know if you ever heard of him he does he does a whole bunch of royalty free music production and uh i saw a picture on his website of his whole logic setup Mm -hmm. and just all the tracks and how he did everything from scratch and i was just like i want to do that <laughs> and for a while i thought that i had the only software that did it was logic i didn't realize that there were other ones so i was like oh i gotta buy a really expensive mac and i gotta buy all this equipment and i'm like 13 so i'm like oh i can't afford this this sucks and so i spent about a year thinking that that was the only way to do things and then i realized that there were other softwares you could do it and you get the free trial and all that and i just fell in love with it from then that's awesome. That's really cool. Um, Speaking of logic, uh, sorry to cut you off, Mark. No, um, go for it. No, go for it. Speaking of logic, uh, have you seen any of the new updates? Because they're definitely, uh, they uh, introduced a step sequencer that I feel like is going after the Fruity Loops crowd. Oh, really? I heard I heard that there's a new update, but I haven't actually seen what they've updated. Uh, yeah. People on online say it's really nice, though. Yeah, they're going, they introduced the live loops feature, which has been in GarageBand for iOS mm -hmm. for a while, but that's like going after the Ableton crowd. And oh, then, nice. Uh, the step sequencer, I feel like, is really uh, going after the drum programming on, um, mm -hmm. on Fruity Loops. They're trying to oh, get yeah, all that's... the customers. <laughs> yeah. 
You gotta pull in the crowd. That's the name of the game, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. I hate. Uh, I can't stand it when DAWs won't actually update things. That's that's one of the reasons I actually really love FL Studios because even though they have a lot of stuff that I think is pointless or counterintuitive, sometimes they will update it mm -hmm. pretty regularly. Like every couple months, something new will come out. So yeah, I hate the 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 hierarchy in Pro Tools. Like you know, I have to uh, pay like a hundred dollars just to get the folder upgrade. Oh, and I'm just like, oh, come on. Like They're gouging you. They're gouging me. I love Pro Tools. I've been using it for, at this point, close to 20 years. Oh, wow. But, you know, but, you know, me, yeah, me and Cooper have been I mean, using this for a long time. And I, I feel like I can't use anything else, but mm -hmm. I do use Logic from time to time and I also use Ableton. Those are some of my favorite um DAWs outside of it fruit of the loops runs a close to all of that and i yeah. also was a big fan of uh nuendo back in the day as well i heard a rumor that you said uh somebody told me you have a pro tools hd tattoo who me yeah <laughs> <laughs> i would I, I would love to see it if i did <laughs> that would be awesome I, no, yeah, I distinctly maybe. remember you telling me on and on, like specifically how you're getting the uh, the Pro Tools HD, and this was with the old logo too. So I'm glad you didn't because uh, they changed the logo. So yeah, you, that would you would have dated yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have definitely dated myself for sure. Yeah, no, it it wasn't um, wasn't a good look, but I did like the logo. It was kind of cool back in the day. But they, I don't even think Avid has a logo anymore. It's just the Avid logo. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, really? I haven't updated my Pro Tools in a long time. I, I'm still on 12.5.2, so I still get a logo. But other than that, you know, I, I wouldn't know. What are they on now? Uh, it's like Pro Tools 2020. That's what they call it because now they're oh, going yeah. by the how many times they uh, upgrade the software a year. Oh. I think they do like the yearly updates. And you know, that's the way I kind of fell off of it. I, I love Pro Tools. I love, uh, I could say I, I loved DigiDesign more than I loved Avid, <laughs> uh, than I love Avid. But um, with that being said, um, you know, I, you know, I, I'm i a big fan. I, I just feel really comfortable using this. Um, I wish I had some of the capabilities that like you would have in um, uh, Fruity Loops or Cooper would have in Ableton or, or Logic, but um, I do feel native to getting things done in a really efficient way in Pro Tools, you know? Yeah, that's one of the things that I really wish I could. I mean, I guess I can. It's just so much effort to go out and learn a second DAW or third DAW and incorporate it all. But some of the sampling capabilities in Ableton, I wish that I had in FL Studio because it's the sampling is just awful. I don't like it at all. It's, mm. You can't, you don't have the, the same warping, the same time stretching, the different um, warp modes that you do in Ableton. And that looks awesome. So I, I want that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I can use half of the upgrades or half of the things you guys have in those DAWs and Pro Tools. <laughs> <laughs> half of them. That would be great. Well, what well, keeps fruit... you going? Good. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. If you want to talk about some more fruit, we could talk about oh, the fruit yeah, all day. About, I'll talk about fruit all day for sure. No, I was going to say, we... it's, uh, it's, it's like the number one most downloaded music software. That's like, it's a huge user base because it's... Yeah, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's... Um, I think they have a Mac version now, but it's, you know, it was... When the Mac version originally came out, it was like more, you know, it was not very good. The, the PC version is definitely where it's at. But they also have yeah. uh, mobile apps too, and it's one of the most, uh, you know, the top uh, music apps on iOS as well. Yeah, the the mobile versions. I've it's definitely, uh, I mean, it's it it's very um, very functional. You can do a lot with it, but it's just confusing in my opinion. I mean, I have no real reason to use it because I have the full version. So, but I've tried it every once in a while, like on a road trip, like oh, let's see what this does. But it's pretty interesting that they incorporated so much of the functionality into mobile yeah so um i mean typically for me with uh, mobile apps i'll try to like pick one so that i can like for instance garage band i can start a beat on garage band and then open it up in uh 
in Logic and then work on it there. And I think you can That's do that awesome. with uh, FL as well. I have like an older version of the FL mobile app, but uh, it was the same thing. I, I was a little daunted when I looked at it. And yeah. Especially because I'm not like, you know, I've, I've used Fruity Loops here and there, but um, I actually used to have a uh, like the full blown version of it because um, uh, my mentor Ken got endorsed by them because uh oh yeah because he was you know just trying to do uh product deals or whatever but it was the same you know we're all mac guys so he's mm -hmm. like yeah install windows on my computer so i can use fruity loops so i you know took like a whole day set up boot camp and all that got it all going and then he like never used it so. oh <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's about as far as I ever got with it too. Is like you know, just get it installed and like play around a little bit, and that was it. And then yeah. Go back. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like to be a... yeah, you got to go with what you know. I think at the end of the day is, is what it's about. Definitely, you know? they're all like pretty legit these days. So I feel like to be a Fruity Loops user, you have to be like a warrior. You know, like you know, like <laughs> definitely <yeah>. not. <laughs> you should see some of my friends and. Uh, not a big warrior community, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, what keeps you going? Like, tell us about some of the projects that you're working on. You say, well, you know, in theory, you're going to be going to college. Yeah. Like, what are some of the things that are keeping you going musically? Um, yeah, just tell us. Well, I mean, I just finished uh, an album, full length album. It came out oh, today, nice. actually, a couple hours ago. So, awesome. Uh, yeah, very excited about that. And it's a little daunting now. I gotta work on another one <laughs> or more singles because it was like, oh, I crossed the finish line. This album's done. It's out. But now it's like, well, now what? You know? Yeah. yeah. It's, get, get back it's, to work. Yeah. So exactly. That's under, uh, ch chagrin is. Yeah, it's under uh, chagrin. Oh, chagrin. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. Your name. No, it's okay. Chagrin. I just changed it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's out on Spotify. It's called uh, Completely Implicit. Um, but I, I think it's. It's chagrin kind of a double-edged sword. Demore? Oh, no. That's... Sorry? I think there's other chagrins. That's, that's what I hate is you can't – there's no original names. you, you got to either use your actual name or you got to um, – Separation anxiety? Um, I, no, if you, just, if you look up completely implicit, that'll, it'll come up. I don't know okay. about these is, other chagrins, is, though. I don't trust them. Is, yeah. is, that, is this not it right here? No, that's somebody else. There's like oh, two more. Completely implicit. I got it. It's the red. Yeah, cover. with the red, with the red lines awesome. and all that. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. we're gonna check that out. Awesome. Yeah. So I mean, it's kind of a double-edged sword with, um, with, uh, or completely implicit. Oh. I am. Yeah, it's okay. Um, so, but it's it's nice to be done with the album because now I don't have to worry. Yeah, there it is. Uh, I don't okay. have to worry put that on your about screen. things I'll, I'll put it up, Mark. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to show this on uh, for the Twitch. Oh yeah, go ahead. The Twitch viewers. Yeah. yeah now we can see yeah. it. Looks the same. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, do you have a link to the uh, Twitch stream, by the way? Because I don't know where to find that. I realize. Oh yeah, right it's now. um. What is my Twitch name? Uh, Platinum Record Mixing is my Twitch handle. <sighs> So I guess it's just twitch.tv slash platform. Oh, there mixing. you are. Yeah. Well, I think you give you a follow. I'm never using Twitch, but yeah, I'm uh, a follower. It's I'm I'm you know, just getting into all these new uh streaming services and yeah video conferencing. I actually did my first vocal session over Zoom yesterday. Oh really? Yeah, it went really well. That sounds hard, honestly. Getting the timing all synced up. No, so the way I did it was I just, um, I basically remote controlled their computer, the artist's computer. Oh. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Because Zoom, you can do uh, remote control. And then I used oh, that's um, awesome. Audio Movers, which is what I've been using for like uh, for all of my remote sessions. So that's like a plug-in that just goes in your DAW and it uh, broadcasts the sound out in high quality. And then you can just log on with like a web browser. And listen to it so that's how i would hear it back so i could like comment on her vocals while she was singing them and oh, I, that's awesome. I was like running the controls and stuff uh so i could like you know because she doesn't know she has all the equipment but she doesn't you know she's not an engineer so um mm -hmm. so i was basically engineering on her computer and then i just sent myself a session and worked out oh that's well. awesome yeah. 
That's really cool. I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah, I gotta so get into that. Now, now that I know that I can do that, I'm never leaving the house again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. No kidding. <laughs> yeah, I knew Cooper would find a way. Yeah. <laughs> well, then yeah, that's uh, the future. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. So then the other thing I was trying to do that source connect, which is uh, it's kind of like an older uh, paradigm for remote recording. It's been around for at least 10 years now and it's, um, it's peer to peer. So you like, you directly connect the audio and it streams like into your computer, but it's, um, it's much more like techie, I guess. And I don't know, there's all these, like, um, like I, I just have the free router from my ISP. So it was like, you have to do all this port forwarding stuff and I'm, I'm not really set up to do all that. And then it like oh, yeah. crashed, crashed out my pro tools. And it was Oof. like not really necessary, so I ended up just uh, going with with what I know. But that's for more like five hundred an hour post production studios, anyway. So yeah, if they call, I'll get it ready the next day. But <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, I'm just sticking with the basics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's really well, cool. It has remote transport sync, so it's uh, which runs over rewire. So um, so you can actually like. Uh, you know, be controlling the session on your end and it'll do the same thing on the session on their end. Oh, wow. That's nice. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Next level stuff with Cooper Anderson here, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I look forward to when that's more accessible cross-platform from DAW to DAW. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be a great way to in integrate it. I mean, Pro Tools had the right idea with the cloud uh, sessions, but yeah it's very um uh, clunky and it would never work going from daw to daw so there needs to be some sort of big integration with all the daws but yeah. i don't... remember when we did that pro tools cloud session it was a disaster <laughs> yeah it was good yeah that was as a youtube disaster as well that can oh, be my what goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the song came out pretty cool though i'll tell you that much so where are you going to uh where are you going to college uh columbia chicago oh nice i'm gonna do a recording arts there Ho hopefully i mean hopefully by the fall i don't even know if i want to go in the fall at this point because i don't want to die you know so yeah, no, for sure. maybe you gotta stay safe maybe spring yeah and i i, I did uh, most of my high school was through community college so i have a lot of my core credits done so there's nothing that I would really be able to take online if they did do that. And I uh, don't right. want to, even if they did, honestly, because I don't want to, I don't want to learn all that online. It doesn't sound like it'll be fun at all. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, as, you know, learning how to do Zoom sessions online is really the only relevant thing as far as like recording school. Cause yeah. that's, that then you would just like learn by doing, but you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah but yeah i mean yeah. I, I went to berkeley college of music and and it was uh definitely like the way they have it set up is like you're in a like production class so you have to like hire an engineer who's in the same level engineering class and then that oh, fulfills okay. their requirement for that class and then you have to hire some studio musicians but there's kids all around who are like, you know, need to do projects. So you're like, oh yeah, I'll do your demo for that class. If you come in and in, in this time and, and it basically like getting the projects done, like fulfills everybody's class requirement, even if they're like in different majors, different instruments or whatever. It's, it's very yeah. interesting. And you can't really get that just like, you know, with one-on-one -on -one zoom sessions or whatever. Yeah. Cause that's mainly, that was the main reason I was going is I was like, because I was considering not going to college for a while. I'm like, I don't, because I, as much as I enjoy doing music, I'm like, well, is it, is it a good idea to do that in college? And I, I ended up deciding on going because really just the, uh, the networking aspect of everything, just meeting people. And even if you, even if it isn't helpful business wise, which it probably is going to be just being around a whole bunch of people with the same interests is just super helpful. You know, I got to, tell this story crazy story um i was just getting ready to, i wanted to go to berkeley uh, uh college of music and um at the same time i started doing some work for a group named cool in the gang um large funk group started playing uh doing you know sessions for them and stuff like that 
So I put that on my resume and all my, you know, kind of resume going into my college application and stuff like that. And um, in my uh, college, you know, uh, like the interview, the president of the college, I forget his name, he, uh, you know, selects me out of all these kids. And he's like, yo, I want to meet you and talk to you in person. So, of course, he didn't say Joe, you know, but that's besides the point. He tells me, he's like, look, I don't want to give you this scholarship. And I'm just like, why? He's like, because you're already a musician. Like, you're already out here. Like, people come to my school to do what you're already doing. So why do you want to come here? I was like, well, I want the education and I want the networking. But he's like, if you keep going with what you're doing, you're going to meet all the people you need to meet. I'll, that always that always stuck with me because, you know, that helped me to realize that no matter if you're in school, if you're in high school, if you're out of it, you're always going to have to find a way to get the networking um, across. And that should always be something that we always look to doing, um, collaborating with musicians. You yeah, know? definitely. Any cool collaborations you got going on? Uh, yeah, actually, right now I'm working. So I do a, a YouTube series uh, called Above Ground Radio, where I get uh, just friends of mine. I put their music on, and uh, sorry, my eyes. Ooh, something's definitely wrong with it. Um, oh, yeah, but, <laughs> uh, but I uh, I just do a little short radio series, like 30 minutes or so a week, and I just put some music on there that I like, give some feedback. It's mostly for just uh, publicity for other people and less about my actual feedback. But we got, um, I think it's 16 of us. We're working on an album together. So we're pairing up and it'll be eight tracks with two producers each. Oh, wow. So it's going to be a little chaotic, but uh, I'm excited to see what's going to come of it because we don't really have any set format. Everybody uses different DAWs. Everybody does different. Uh, most people do electronic, but it's all different sort of subgenres in there. And some people do hip hop. Some people, one guy does like indie rock. And we just randomly paired everybody up. So, uh, and we don't have any theme for the album. We're just going to see what happens, honestly. And so, it, it honestly might be a train wreck, but it'll be fun to fun to do, even if it is. Cool. That's awesome, man. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to checking that out for sure. Yeah, for sure. And uh, if uh, we always love to collaborate too, so if there's yeah, any definitely. need for any guitar work or things of that nature, feel free to hit us yeah. up and we'll, you know yeah. cooper is also the uh the, the most amazing resampler sa uh, <laughs> sample replay engineer in the world you know so <laughs> <laughs> yeah you guys can feel free we're all we're still looking for more people 16 we, it wasn't like we set 16 it was like how many people want to do this and then 15 other people said yes so we're as many uh, people can join as you want. So if you guys want to come on and do something, then yeah, definitely. I can, uh, I can send you some of the information. Uh, the only rules that we have are it has to be, your track has to be done by the end of June and you can't rip anybody else off. You got to own all the copyright. And then other than cool. that, it's fair game. So cool. That sounds yeah. cool. All right. Well, you guys might be hearing some new music with Chagrin, yeah. <laughs> Mark Dollar, and Cooper Anderson soon. Oh, this, yeah. this summer, the best <laughs> music compilation to ever come out between three and maybe some more individuals. <laughs> <laughs> no, three and, and 15 other individuals. Yeah, a lot of three people. Oh my God. Plus 15 other individuals coming together to make beautiful music <laughs> um, i'm a little i'm a little worried because not not really worried but most people are in my demographic late teens early 20s that sort of thing a lot of a lot of people in high school and uh i'm fully aware that that uh, teenagers are very flaky so i got a lot of people <laughs> who are like yeah, yeah, bro, for sure, 100%. It'll be done by the end of June. And then I, I fully expect June 30th, I'll text everybody, hey, uh, send in your tracks. And they'll be like, oh, yeah, about that. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. So we got four tracks instead of eight. <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> even that's if the it's, thing with this stuff. Yeah. It, it takes, uh, it always takes longer than you expect. Like, 
Yeah, exactly. You know, I always at least triple the amount of time I would expect. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, it's definitely a long... And, and it's, but, you know, you can get started on a song and then just, like, finishing it is uh, oh, like yeah. the most difficult part. But, yeah. It's all yeah, repetition. songs within resource, you know, those are the biggest kind of topics that we have today. It's like, like, what are you able to do with just, like, your small sonic set? If you just have a computer mm -hmm. with just a few samples... Like if you're going for a bigger recording, then you got to call other musicians and maybe other producers, you know, exactly. all of those things kind of take time, you know, like, um, so yeah, you always kind of have to allow it to just kind of happen. Um, music, you know, I always find it um, to be organic and I always try to treat it like I'm a, like, a, a, like a 12 year old kid, you know, it's like, do I like it? Do I not like it? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. You know, I just yeah. try to move on from there, you know? Exactly. Yeah, it's it's tough. I think especially with the with solo production now, it's you can do so much just with such a small setup. All you need is a DAW pretty much and a couple of plugins and then you can there's so many possibilities that it's hard to hard to come up with stuff because I, I think I, I usually work better when I'm more limited. When I only have a couple sounds or a basic idea to work with, then I can build that easier. But as soon as you have a thousand different samples to pick from and all these plugins and different sounds, it's impossible. It's overwhelming. Well, let's talk more about that because that's actually been some of my topics. One of the things that we do on this, uh, this show is we review New Music Friday on Spotify. And last week... Uh, you know, while I thought last week's uh, playlist was really, really good, there were some great songs on there. I just kind of felt like, and I felt this way this week too, is that people are just leaving it to their samples. You yeah. know, it's almost like they're just like, you know, they're, I, and I just got to, I was just going to say this. Um, I got a Splice account this week uh, just to, you know, fish out there for all the different types of samples, you know? I looked mm -hmm. up for some Afrobeat, like electro drums and stuff like that. I found a really good pack, but I almost can see how with like a young producer um, can just go there and just be like, or just a producer in general, young, old, yeah. uh, you know, we're all the same. Um, you can just go on there and just be like, you know what? I'm just gonna look for a dope sample. Okay, cool. Um, kick 808 kick boom boom records done put the artist on it exactly. it's just like a lot of times it just feels that way like on this week's playlist is a thousand guitar samples but there's no there's no like continuity well i just feel like they were just okay this is a cool sample we're gonna just do our you know little kick bass thing whatever it is mm -hmm. and just keep moving from there how do you keep yourself super fresh in the matter of like selecting your samples and stuff like that i don't know it's tough definitely especially with i mean splice is too good i think <laughs> like, yeah it's the there's too much out there where it's you can like you said you can pretty much make an entire track just out of samples that you pull and now with you don't have to get an entire pack at once you can just pull individual samples it's so easy which I, it's, it's great sometimes, honestly, because I want, okay, I know exactly what I want. Like I'm looking for this very specific sample so I can find it without having to spend $20 on the pack that contains that sample, you know? Because I've definitely yeah. done that. Like I've gotten an entire pack for like $15, $20 just for like three samples in it. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm glad like that I don't have to do that anymore. with the record industry too. I mean, you used to buy a CD for $15 mm -hmm. and it would have one good song on it. It's the same, same thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then they switched to streaming. So the uh, splice, the paradigm is iTunes. Yeah, you yeah. Can buy a single track or a single sample or whatever. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And then, and then it's even moved over into the okay. Now you pay a subscription and you get all you want. So you don't. The money doesn't even. I mean, some money does go to the artist, but like practically nothing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Uh, well, I know some people on Splice, but. Um, uh, I don't know, like the the business end, but um, uh, my good friend Dylan uh, Wissing is on uh, Sounds.com, which is like the Native Instruments version of Splice, basically, and he's released uh, several packs on there. Uh, we actually have a new one coming out that I mixed, but um, yeah, it's not you're not getting rich off that. 
Yeah. Especially because there's just so much content, and then like you know one sample. I mean, there's just not that much profit margin, really. You know, especially mm-hmm. if they're you know, I don't even know what they're like what splice in them are taking in, but it's just less than a dollar for sure. Oh yeah. I think even less than that. I'm, oh yeah. I'm, I think it's like p- pennies on the dollar. You know, mm-hmm. I was going through Splice and I know I'm almost certain they have doubles going on in the program. Like I was looking for a very specific kick sound and I was like, that's the same kick. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's like we have all these like multi, like duplicates of the same kick drum, maybe a little different, but it's like the same. So yeah. I don't know. Well, a lot of people will take the, you know, they'll take someone else's kit and then like reprocess it and put it out as their own kit, you know, relabel it. Oh, yeah. 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 Not my samples. My samples are 100% original. I recorded that shit myself. Yeah, that's the way to do it. <laughs> yeah, word. Awesome. Well, um, anything you want to leave off in the music community with today, you want to share with us? Um, um, any particular song that you want, you know, our listeners to like really pay attention to on your new EP, um, give us, uh, some of that insight. Uh, well, as far as particular songs, uh, I don't really have, I mean, I definitely have my favorites, but, um, it's finally taken me five years to realize that my favorites aren't always everybody else's favorites. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, I'm just, I'm just, uh, happy with uh, how the album turned out in terms of concept because I, I put um, uh, a lot of time into not using any samples with words in the entire album. So, um, and I also did the same thing with the cover art. Um, I didn't make the cover art myself, but the guy that I uh, hired to do it, I intentionally wanted there to be as little concrete language as possible throughout the whole thing. Because that was the idea behind the name, completely implicit. Nothing is explicitly mm. stated throughout the whole album. So you kind of have to infer what you think about it. And it's very individual. And uh, that, that's the idea, at least. I like um, that. I like that. That's a really cool concept, you know? So your anti-vocal sample on this record. In this yeah, record. on this one. Yeah. And I love that because you know what I'm saying? Like, this is another thing that I was talking about with the Spotify playlist. It's like... Here we go with the vocal samples. It's like, <laughs> do did you did you really need it? Yeah. Like in Grab this production, slice, put put your drums on, throw a couple of vocal chops on there, get the artist yeah. on it, ship it to radio. Yeah, it's like that's a, that's the thing I I kind of get disturbed by some bedroom pop producers because like they already have the atmosphere, but then they try to just throw in the 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 sample the vocal samples i'm just like Mm -hmm. you kind of already had that going yeah exactly you know so i'm i love that dude and like that's a big cheers to me dude like you you know like seriously that's awesome like i i love concept concept is like a lost art in our industry i i was you know i i think this is a big thing to talk about you know I was going to talk to Cooper about this, but are we a generation of producers or are we a generation of samplers? What do you guys think? Uh, oh, man, I don't know. That's that's tough. That's a tough one. What do you think, Cooper? I mean, I think just electronic music in general has always been based on sampling. So mm. that's where it started. But, like, you know, then there's the, you know, the, the classic argument of what's the difference between a beat maker and a producer. And I think it just mm-hmm. kind of comes back to that. You know, if you're just sampling stuff and, you know, vocal chops, whatever, that's a beat maker versus a producer is someone who's taking a song and turning it into a record. And, you know, whatever that takes, I mean, there's, you know, different genres and whatever, they have different requirements to fulfill that, that, uh, vision. But, um, that's, pretty much the main difference is like yeah just just making the beats and samples versus seeing the vision the entire way through and i i can tell just you know i haven't even listened to your album yet but just by seeing you know hearing you talk about it and like the concept of your collaboration album you're definitely more on the producer track oh, yeah good. yeah you're 100 yeah. percent a producer oh yeah thank you I, I agree with what you're saying on the the sampling front 
I think it's a, a lot of how not necessarily just how seriously you take it, but how much how much you make it your own, really, because it's not I, I don't know. I'm sure you guys have seen the same YouTube tutorials that uh, people show you, OK, here's how you make this sort of thing. And then you can throw something together in 10 minutes that sounds professional quality and it, it sounds like it could be a track. It's just bland and generic. It sounds like everything else that you've already heard just mashed into one thing minus all the originality. And so that's the, I think that's the easy part is, and so that's what, that's what I look for in people that I'm listening to is what stands out because yeah. I don't want to listen to something that sounds the same as all the other records that I've already heard. Yeah. And you know, uh, I think a lot of, and also in the, the lyrical game too, like with songwriters, yeah. it's very much the same, you know, like they're just hitting the same cadences, you know, the same kind of rhythmic kind of mm -hmm. ideas, nothing's, nothing always and i'm not always expecting that people to come out of my, with an idea out of their ass but at the same time like i, I just want the, something to feel more fresh you know mm -hmm. and yeah. you can hear that like like the second you hear a vocal like you don't need to hear a whole song to say wow that vocal is different or wow yeah. that you know so I, you know, that's what I look for in production. I, I look for people to grab me as soon as possible, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, man, I, I really, yeah, you're definitely a producer, man, for yeah. sure. And uh, do you guys have links to where I can uh, listen to y'all's music anywhere? Because I'm, let's see, I can actually probably just check on this Twitch, huh? Uh, maybe. <laughs> um, I, oh. Well, um, you, oh. I'm not sure Go how for my it, Twitch Cooper. is set up, but yeah, no, I'll, uh, I have like Spotify links. I mean, all my stuff's on my website, Cooper Anderson. Oh yeah, Platinum Records. I just found that. Um, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I am. Uh, Actually, I'm not uh, even have... sure if my reels are on there. I gotta check that out. I don't know. I yeah, it's like uh, doing the website and the Twitch and all that. It's always like an afterthought for me. Like yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, it's, oh, yeah I, we gotta also do this you know in, in between uh, clients or whatever <laughs> yeah I, I can't have, uh, I can't stand that I have a Spotify playlist on uh, uh, on Spotify of course uh, <laughs> this is uh, pretty much my real I have to actually update it this is uh, as per like 2018 2019 I've done a lot more stuff since then but yeah this is uh, a lot of my production and mix work um I, I tend to work with a lot of rock bands, a lot of, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of mid-tier rock bands and stuff like that, metal and stuff like that. But, okay. you know, when I work with Cooper, we exclusively work on pop and all of that stuff. So, nice. um, yeah, that's really like um, the, the coolest part of what uh, Cooper and I do when we come together and work on productions. Um, but, yeah, my, like, daily life, this is... You know, so you'll hear some of those examples. You know, I got the chance to work with some really pretty big bands. I got there, you know, like uh, I worked with Lana Del Rey. I think that's on this playlist. Uh, no, nah, it's actually not. I took that off. But uh, yeah, um, uh, The Pretty Reckless, uh, Sun and Flesh, you know, a, a lot of mid-tier rock and roll bands. But I hope you get the chance to check that out and tell me what you think. Yeah, how can I find that uh, playlist? I'll actually, uh, I'll go ahead. And we we can email link. it to you. That that reminds okay, me, yeah. Mark. We got to, uh, we have to work on our website for this podcast too, because we do actually have a website, producingmusicpodcast dot com. Okay. Yes, yeah. we do. Because we uh, we're updating our new music Friday playlist uh, with the new music Friday modified. So that that's going to be on there as well. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah well, definitely email uh, those links to me because I want to check that out. Yeah. For okay, sure. Cool. Absolutely. All right. So Chagrin, it's got the new album out. Everybody check it out. Yeah. Thank you. And, we will uh, definitely be in contact, Chagrin. Thank you for being on the podcast awesome. today. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having talk, me. Yeah. yeah. Super inspiring to talk to you. Glad to know that the young producer generation is as, you know, skilled and as willed as you are. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I'm really uh, excited to see that you guys are actually doing a meaningful music podcast online because there's so many so many that are just 
oh, I'm going to use this as a front to just spam my, uh, spam my SoundCloud over and over and over again, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not yet. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll do that next time. But <laughs> yeah. Well, definitely when that new album come out, we go <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> check out my new album. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. We'll be like, this week on New Music News, check out my new album. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. The playlist is just your album. That's the, that's the entire just, playlist. Yeah. <laughs> it's just your single multiply like yeah. 20 times. Over and over and over again, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chagrin, thank you so much, man. Have yeah, a thanks great for having day. me. You I too. I look forward to listening to your record, and we'll be in touch. Okay, great. Thanks. All right. Thanks. All right, thanks, buddy. Cool. That was fun. That was super Chagrin, fun, Chagrin. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gents, so we got some really cool music, you know, yeah. producers out here, and yeah, that felt good. It was really good to, you know, uh, and where is Chagrin coming from? Is he out in Illinois, as he said, or was he? Uh, uh, that's where he said he's going to college. I, I actually forgot to ask uh, where he was located, but he's located on the internet. You can find him on Spotify. Yeah, yeah that's all you exactly. Need to know. That's all we need to know. <laughs> you don't need to go to the guy's house. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs>